Hello, welcome to Moo Moo Math. Today we're going to look at inscribed angles. So we're going to look at two theorems. The first one says the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay, now what's an inscribed angle? It's an angle whose vertex lies on the circle. So here's a picture of one, Z, X, Y. This angle is inscribed because X is the vertex and it lies on the circle. Okay, if two inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc, then the angles must be congruent. So let's look at those two cases. Okay, first we're going to look at the angle X, I'm sorry, Y, X, Z. So this is the angle. Notice I'm darkening it to help see it. Okay, they intercept this arc. When we say intercept, it means what arc is cut off in the circle. So this angle back here is 50 degrees. That's given to us. So if we know this is 50, that theorem says that I that the arc is um, double the angle or the angle is half the arc. So I'm going to double it. So that's going to be 100 degrees. Okay, so that's how I find that angle. Now the other way you can look at it is from Y to W to Z. Notice YWZ intercepts the same arc, doesn't it? It's just got a different vertex. The vertex, instead of being X, it's W, but it still has Y and Z as the two endpoints. So we know this arc right here is also, or, is, or the angle back here is also 50, whoops, 50 degrees, because it's half of the 100 degree arc. Okay, so let's go through. It says YXZ and YWZ both intercept this arc, YZ, so that means these angles must be congruent to each other. So let's find YWZ, well we just figured that out, and that's 50. Okay, how about the arc WX? Okay, here's the arc WX. Which angle or angles intercept it? Well, if you look, WYX, there's an angle and it intercepts that arc. See how I've extended the sides? Okay, so if this is 35, that means the arc has to be double that, which is 70. Okay, and how about the angle WZX? Okay, that's this angle right here. Well, what arc does that intercept? That intercepts the same arc, WX. So if this is 70, this is 35. So we can see that these two angles intercept the same arc, WZ. So that's what that theorem is saying. Let's look at a couple other ones. Okay, here's another one. If a right angle is inscribed in a circle, then the hypotenuse is a diameter. Conversely, which means we're just going to reverse it, if one side of an inscribed triangle is the diameter, then the triangle is a right triangle and the angle opposite the diameter must be the right angle. Okay, so here's a picture. We're going to say that AC is a diameter. That means it goes through the center. Okay, we know that this arc from A to B is half of the circle, so it's 180 degrees. So if this is 180 and we have an inscribed angle back here at C, notice if this is 180, this has to be half of it, which is 90 degrees. And that's why that theorem is true. Okay, if angle eight, uh, angle A is 38 degrees, what must angle B be? Well, what do we know about the sum in a triangle? Uh, the sum of a triangle is 180. So if I take 180 and I subtract my 90 degree angle, and then I subtract the 38 degree angle, I get 52. So that means that this angle at B must be 52 because I've gone from looking at the circle and the inscribed angle to now looking at the triangle. Okay, let's look at the last picture here. A quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if its opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, so let's see what that means. Opposite angles, that's A and C are opposite, B and D are opposite, and supplementary means they must add to 180. So if this one is 110, and this one has to help it add up to 180, so this must be 70. And this is 95, and this is unknown, so this must be 180 minus 95, which is 85. So let's go over here. So angle P, that's this one, is 70. That really should be angle D. And angle Q, which is this one, is 85. And that is how you find those opposite angles in 
a quadrilateral that's inscribed. Now let me explain why that works. It's the same concept. Okay, if I take angle B, and I know it's inscribed, that's 110. If I look at this arc, that must mean I double it to 220. Well, what do I know about a circle? 360 degrees in the whole thing. So if this arc that I've just intercepted is 220, if I subtract it from 360, that leaves me 140. That means this side of the circle must be 140. Well, this arc that's opposite in the quadrilateral is inscribed. So if this is 140, the angle opposite, it must be half, which is 70. And that's why that property works. Hope this video was helpful on inscribed angles.